darkest hour is nearing. We thank our dear sister for rendering this song for us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sabbath morning service. I want to welcome all of you who are live on YouTube. Uh, this stream is also being posted onto the Facebook channel so that you can click on and go directly to the YouTube channel. We are streaming only from YouTube today. We will, back, we will be back to our regular streaming on YouTube and Facebook next week. So I'm thankful to be here this morning. I'm thankful to have you here this morning. We have all come together to receive another meal from the Lord. And this morning, the sermon is entitled, Enter Light, Exit Night. Yes, Enter Light, Exit Night. And so as we begin, my brothers and my sisters, Again, welcome one, welcome all, let us pray, let God begin to feed us with his word. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this moment, dear Lord, asking for your divine blessings. We come to you asking for the continuous presence of your Holy Spirit. We come to you, dear Father, asking for your direction as I speak and for the listening ears of your people. Help us all to be tuned towards you, dear Father. Whatever your word needs to do to us today, dear Lord, let it be done. And I pray, dear Lord, once we have heard, once we have studied, may we incorporate into our lives the principles found today. And as always, dear Father, we do not stop short to give you all the praise and all the glory for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Enter light, exit night. There are billions of people that live in this world. There are thousands upon thousands of denominations. There are religions. There are buildings there or there. There are persuasions that are not necessarily religious, but they are congregations. And I want us to understand when you go through all the people, when you separate all the belief systems in the world, 
when you separate all the denominations in the world, religions of the world, the people are either walking in light or darkness. That's just plain as day. You and I, whatever we profess to be, is actually nurturing in us light or darkness. We're either walking in the light or we're walking in the darkness. This principle is true for every single person that lives in the world. Even the person in the world who says, I don't have anything to do with religion, is also walking in the light or in the darkness. A spiritual walk is a walk no one can ignore. It is a walk everyone is a, partake, is a partaker of. Because the Bible says sooner or later, God will come and everyone will give an account for the things done in their body. To give an account for the things done in your body, you would have had to have a spiritual motivation that developed into a tree. And out of that tree comes a fruit. Some seed was planted in you and in an eye. And that seed springs up and we do things based on a spiritual motivation. And it is either the fruit of the spirit or the fruit of the flesh. Deeds done in the flesh, which are abomination unto the Lord. I want to take you to the first chapter and verse of the Bible. Let's understand something. Let's set the framework here from which we're working. Look at the first chapter, Genesis 1. And we know what the Bible says in Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Look at verse 2 very carefully. The Bible says the earth was without form. The earth was void. The Bible says darkness was upon the face of the deep. There was nothing. When you're dealing with darkness, are you dealing with nothingness? Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And so the Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. So he called the light day and the darkness night. So we are dealing in the beginning of all things. We have a God who exists, but we have a state of nothingness that existed before the world was created. There was nothing there. Darkness, blackness, void of anything. So God says now, who is light? He says, let there be light. So in comes light. So then you have God, you have light, and now you have what? Revelation. Let there be light. And so now there is a revelation of something that was not there before. And so from revelation, you have growth. These are the principles we are working with today. Darkness, nothingness. But then you have light, then you have God who says, let there be light. From light comes revelation. You can now see that which is to come. First sight, light. And then you have revelation and growth. From the point of light, God will begin to call things to existence and then to create with his hands. And now you have what we all see. And it grows from there. Go to Romans 1, 20. This is our principal foundation that we are working from today. Romans 1 and verse 20. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, The invisible things of God, from cre of Him, God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so people are without excuse. In the beginning, nothingness. God says, let there be light. And there was light. God created the world. After light, God says, first distinction, light, day, night, darkness. 
Then God brings the trees. God separates the waters. God brings the animals. God brings the plants. God creates man. God does his creation and now everything is seen. You have the moon he establishes as the lesser light for the night with the stars and the sun, which is the greater light for the day. But we are dealing with the principle, as I said, of God, light, revelation, growth, darkness, nothingness. Understand this, that God is light. God creates and so reveals the unseen through the seen. The very order of the world, everything pertaining to the world is an actual revelation of God. So even the unseen, he says, are clearly seen by what is made. Even his power, even his Godhead, his relationship, God the Father and Jesus Christ coming from God. You have the sun who sheds light on the moon. You have the relationship, the synchronized relationship with nature. The Bible says through Christ, who is the word becoming flesh. God spoke the word. God spoke and things came into being. The Bible says Christ, the word, became flesh. So the very synchronizing and authoritative relationship of the power of the Godhead is seen even in creation. Go to Revelation 22, 1 to 5. John said, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. That's the Godhead. God. The throne of God and the throne given to Christ. The Bible says they shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face. And his name will be in their foreheads. And the Bible says what? There shall be no night there. No need of the con candle. Not even the sun is needed. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. No night. No more night. The sun has no need of existence. Because remember, God set the sun in its place. There was nothing. He is light. Let there be. Light came forth. He separated the light from the day. He established the sun. He establishes the moon and the stars. Know this. God, the antithesis of God is darkness. If you remove God from the let there be light, what you have is nothing. Blackness. Darkness. It's not about God saying, let there be darkness. There is darkness outside of God. In God, there is only light. There is only revelation. There is only growth. But outside of God is darkness. I want us to get this point. Remember, darkness, nothingness. God, light, revelation, growth. When one leaves God, they leave light and enter the darkness. Darkness is used to make a salient point in the Bible that I want us to understand. In Ephesians 5 and verse 12, many people will run to me and tell me that God said, I create light. And I create darkness. When you look at the darkness that is listed here in the book of Genesis and the darkness 
that is stated here in this scripture, these are two different things that we are dealing with. God, by, by, by the mere creation of Lucifer, son of the morning, an angel of light, who became darkness, by that, God says, I create light and I create darkness. But the darkness that existed in Genesis is a darkness of nothingness. God didn't create evil. Evil came about. Satan corrupted. Satan, Lucifer was corrupted and became Satan. Look at Ephesians 5 and verse 12. Listen to what the Bible says. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by what? By the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, what does he say? Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. See then that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise people. Cement that in your minds and run to Ephesians 6 and 12 and look at the contrast. Bible says, all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now run to Ephesians 6 and verse 12. What does the Bible say? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. What we wrestle against is principalities and powers. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible says yes there are men that rule this world. But motivating these men are spirit. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Satan took upon himself the cloak of darkness. But he is God's creation. So yes. By having created Lucifer, who became Satan, God takes ownership and says, I create light and darkness. Satan is not a self-existent being as I am. He is a created being. But I didn't make him sinful. There is no darkness in God to make darkness. He is perpetual light. Outside of him is darkness. Satan stepped out of God and became spiritual darkness. And so the Bible says we wrestle in this world against the demonic forces of the kingdom of darkness. And the leaders whose decisions are being made are motivated as such. But the Bible says when it comes to God, God is not in the act of hiding. God is in the act of bringing forth and exposing. All things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Darkness covers. Darkness hides. Light makes manifest. Light brings to view all that was happening in the dark. Darkness covers what needs to be done in secret. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. The Bible says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship hath unrighteousness with righteousness? What communion have light with darkness? There can be none. Wherever light exists, darkness cannot. Light must go off for darkness to be there. Before sin, the sun ruled the day, the moon, and the stars by night. I want us to understand this was the natural order of the world. The sun ruled the day and the moon and stars ruled the night. Post sin, we have a statement that the unfruitful works 
are done under the cloak of darkness. But I want us to understand, the unfruitful works are done under the cloak of darkness even though they do it in the day. It is still hidden. It still needs to be hidden. Even in the day, the cloak of darkness must be put on to accomplish unfruitful work. So what I'm trying to get us to understand today, it is imperative that the principal teaching of the entrance of light and the exit of night and darkness must be made plain and incorporated into the life of a human being. The Bible says we live in a world that we wrestle against the darkness itself because the enemy's plan is gross darkness must be in and about the people and never allow light to enter. There is a song, Enter Sandman, that says exit light, enter night. And that's the principle by which Satan operates. Exit light so that darkness and night can come in. Sun set so that the cloak of darkness can cover this world. So that the unfruitful works can be done. In the spiritual terms, exit God. And allow light to go out with him. So that the unfruitful works of sin can be run can run rife and roughshod over this world let us begin to get let's, let us begin to get understanding because the theme today is enter light exit night the bible says in john 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. God said, and it came to pass by his word. So in the beginning was the word. With him was him. Because when anything comes from God, it is God. In him was life, and the life was what? The light of men. Be very careful attention as we connect the scriptures. In him was life. The life in him was the light of men. In him is the life. And the life is the light of men. The Bible says in Hebrews 1 and verse 1, speaking of the same Person that is referenced here in John chapter 1, Hebrews 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past according unto the fathers by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto us by whom? His son. What did he appoint him? Heir of all things. By whom also he made the worlds. What was he? The brightness of his glory. The express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the brightness of the glory of God. And the express image of his person. Now Jesus, when he came to this earth, met a world in darkness. Gross darkness was over the people of the world in his time. Jesus, the Bible says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. What did he do? He reveals darkness on two fronts when he comes to this earth. Two fronts. First John 5, 19. First John chapter 5 and verse 19. The Bible says, We know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. 
lieth in darkness, lieth in the unfruitful works of death or unrighteousness. The whole world. The Bible is distinct about this. There is no escaping this. There is no sugarcoating this. There is no trying to circumvent this. The whole world lieth in wickedness. You and I are not of the world. We are called from the world into communion with light. We are its light. So the whole world lieth in wickedness. Jesus reveals the wickedness of the world naturally. But look at Ephesians 5.11. Look at Ephesians 5 and verse 11. Jesus also reveals darkness on another front. Jesus says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Our duty as the light of the world is to reprove that which is dark concerning the world. We have no fellowship with the unproductive mind and system of the world. It is steeped in darkness. It is steeped in all manner of fleshly lust. All that is in the world, the pride, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, they are not of God. And so we are asked not to have fellowship with them, but rather reprove them, approach them in the light of Christ and reveal that which is wrong. Now look at Matthew 15. That's the world. That is very clear. We see it every day today. The world lies in utter wickedness. We are sighing, we are crying, we are pointing out that which is wrong with the world. But look at Matthew 15. Jesus said something, reading from verse 8 of Matthew 15. Jesus says, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but guess what? Their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were actually offended when they heard you say this? He said, Every plant which my father, heavenly father, have not planted, shall be rooted up. Let them alone. What are they? Blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both fall into the ditch. The Pharisees were concerned about the lack of washing of hands and etiquette of Jesus and his disciples. Jesus says, as clean as you may wash your hands, as oft as you may wash your hands, as long as you may wash your hands, you are defiled from within. What goeth into the disciples is a cleansing. What you are is defiled and you have refused the cleansing, so you are defiled. It is not the lack of washing of hands. What comes out of you is disgusting. It is darkness. You all are blind. You have blinded the minds of people. You are putting a stumbling block between the people and heaven. You are blind leaders of the blind. Why? Because you don't have light in you to disseminate to the world. So it is not simply the world in darkness alone. The professed people of God are blind. Because their leaders are blind. John 3. John 3, 18 to 21. John chapter 3. The Bible says, look at 17. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. 
He did not come for condemnation. He did not come to condemn you in the light. Here the Bible says, but he that believeth not is condemned already. How does this work? Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The remedy that has been prescribed for the condition that you are in has been dispatched, has been put in play, has already uh, is already in place for your participation. The Bible says you ought to believe. I ask for your belief in my son that I dispatch from heaven as the supreme sacrifice for sin. He did not come to condemn you. If you believe on him, you are not condemned. But if you choose not to believe, you do not believe in the very thing that has been sent for your salvation, for your restoration, for your healing, for your forgiveness. So guess what? This is the condemnation. This is it. That light is come into the world. But guess what men loved? They loved the cloak. They love to hide. They love the closet. They love under the bed. They love the sunset. They love the darkened caves. They love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They do not want the remedy because the remedy actually brings to light what is wrong with them. They rather abide in their wrong. So the Bible says that is their condemnation. Not my son. Not me, not some vindictive God looking at people who are perpetrating works in this earth and trying to burn them. He says, no, what I am disseminating is my gospel. What is the message that is given today? Darkness, highlighting things that are wrong without remedy. He says, my gospel is to be given for the salvation of souls. And if they reject it, that's their condemnation. The Bible says, everyone that doeth evil hates the light, neither cometh to the light, let his, lest his deeds should be reproved. A man who does not desire salvation from his sin-sick soul, a man, who the, a woman who does not desire to be healed from that which she is corrupted by, hates the light. But those who desire to be changed, those who desire, who desire to be saved, those who partake of the remedy comes to the light, allows their deeds to be reproved. Because that's what his mission was, to seek and to save that which was lost. Look at John 8, 21. John 8, 21. Jesus says, I go my way. You shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. I am here. Follow me as your salvation. The time will come when it will be too late, when I would have gone. And you would have missed your opportunity to be saved. And you would condemn yourselves. You will die in your sins because you reject the very method that has been dispatched from heaven. To overcome. What does 1 John 1 8 say? 1 John 1 8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But what does verse 9 say? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's his mission, brothers and sisters. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, I'm reading from verse 10 of 2 Corinthians 11. Reading from verse 10. Listen to what the Bible says. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth 
what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. What are they, those of the circumcision, who are trying to have people observe, uh, the, observe the ways of Christ, not in the spirit, but in the letter? Because they desire and uh, they desire to usurp authority over the brethren, not ever leading the brethren to Christ. Christ says they look for proselytes and make him twice the child of hell. Paul says they are false workers, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. He says, God marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Lucifer was there in the presence of God. Lucifer radiated God, but Lucifer left God. Now he just has precious gems as his covering without any true reflection of the glory of God. He can't self-produce reflection. He transforms himself into an angel of light. How? By deceiving the mind. He really isn't, but one believes he is. And so they follow him willingly. So he says, it is no great marvel, no great thing, if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. It is not strange, since they serve their father, the devil, since they preach according to the gospel of Satan. Even if they open this Bible for you, there is no light in them. Even when they speak the words of this Bible, they misrepresent it. They teach you falsehoods based in the Bible. There is no light in them. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3, 17 through 19. Or Philippians chapter 3. Paul says, be ye followers together of me. Mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. They are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Paul says be careful who you're walking with. Jesus already told you they are blind leaders. Careful who you're walking with, even though they carry a cross, even though they tattoo a cross in the middle of their chest, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. These are men whose only glory and honor and desire is earthly things, wealth, status, and the like. They do not live to glorify God. They use God as a means to glorify themselves. They use God as a prop. They use God as a means to con you. Paul says, be careful. Brethren, light is dispatched for our saving not for our destruction. If we are destroyed, it is not because there isn't light. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. The Bible says, Of times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. Your only duty is to be ready. When they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You are not in darkness. The day should not overtake you as a thief. Because a person in the day, a person who doesn't sleep, is a person always ready, always watching. You are all children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of the darkness, not of the world, not of its mindset, not unprepared for the coming of Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, do not sleep as others. Watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night, in the cloak of darkness. Drunken literally with wine or alcohol. Drunken spiritually with false doctrine, pregnant with false information. Drunken with false teaching, unable to discern right from wrong. Cannot even see what the man is telling you is utter error. You're looking at it, you're reading it, but drunk spiritually. We must have our senses exercised, brothers and sisters, to discern that which is good from that which is evil. That's why Paul says they keep you as babies, never knowing the truth. You ought to never grow to a mature adult in these religious persuasions. Because they want you to ever be at their beck and call, at their mercy. A true apostle of the Lord leads you to freedom in Christ. Helps you stand on your own two feet. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, 130. Psalm 119, 130. Bible says what? Psalm 119, 130. The Bible says, The entrance of thy word, words, giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. The entrance of thy words. You are taking in this thing for yourself. Even when you hear it, you went and studied it and proved it to be true. And the entrance of it into the life, which is truth, the Bible says. Truth, which is Christ. The Bible says, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. These are they which testify of me. You are meeting him in these words. You are studying this thing. And so the Bible says the entrance of it brings Christ into, the, into communion with the believer. And it therefore gives light. Look at Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. The Bible says his word is a lamp unto our feet. His word is a light unto our path. I want you to understand something. You can hold the lamp. The light in the lamp you cannot hold. Thy word is a lamp unto your feet. The word is a light unto your path. The lamp contains the light. One holds the lamp, but not the light. What is David in effect pointing to? Go to 2 Corinthians 4. What is David pointing us to? 2 Corinthians 4. Listen to what the Bible says, 1 through 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Paul says, I am not above reproach. I am not above testing. I have commended myself to your conscience. He says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. In effect, David is saying, Thy word, Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. David said, I cherish Christ. Through the word, I have built a bond with God. 
you and I today receiving this word, cherishes it, develops a relationship with Christ who opens our eyes to the reality of our life and opens our life opens our eyes to the pitfalls that lie ahead of us. We can navigate life when Christ is an active part of our lives. In him is the life, and the life of Christ is our light. Christ effectually is the word. Christ effectually is the lamp which contains the light. We hold that lamp near and dear to us because without that lamp, we stub our toes. Without that lamp, we step in a ditch. Without that lamp, we fall down the precipice. I want to issue a warning from the Bible today that we all need to pay heed to. Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23. Listen to what the Bible says. In Matthew chapter 6, 22 through 23, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye is evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, oh my goodness, how great is that darkness. Understand, in the process of sight, your eyes collect the information and sends the information to the brain. The brain then tells your eye what they're looking at. The Bible says the light of the body is your eye, but you are processing the information in your mind. So what you see, you receive. What you receive is embedded in you. And when, you, when it is embedded in you, you process information through it. So how dangerous it is when we give heed and accept and never test and soak in false doctrine, false teaching, false understanding of the word of God. Because the Bible says, if your eye is evil, the whole body is full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, to you it is light. To God it is error. It is abomination. But it has become you. It has shaped you. It has molded you into the faithful follower of whatever you are today. And the Lord says, no matter how diligent you are in believing the lie, it doesn't make it the truth. No matter how humble your preacher is that disseminates the lie, it doesn't make it true. I behold brain soaks in beholding changes the individual and so the way god has designed this to be as i began this discourse today i said when you boil down all the people in the world when you boil down all the religions in the world you are either being taught to walk in darkness or walk in light you are either receiving the light of Christ into your life to walk in his perpetual light or you are receiving dark, the cloak of darkness into your life unto your damnation and ultimate destruction and your condemnation. That's why the Bible says, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else you will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The world invites you to the darkness of its lifestyle. And in the darkness of its lifestyle, one exits light and enters night. But the principle of God is, the entrance of your words give light. Enter light, exit night. That's the theme of the child of God today. And that's the cry to the world. Even though 
You are professed to be a non-believer of God. You are walking in darkness whether you profess it or not. My friends, we are living in a time of gross darkness upon the people. And even more sad, we are living the very principle here where there are blind leading the blind in many churches today. Those of you who have heard this message today have a responsibility to test where you are now to pray to God earnestly, to open your eyes to the deception that you may be under. And by all means, if God has convicted you that where you are is helping you grow in the truth, may you remain and grow in Christ. But I am telling you today, let no man take the place of Christ in your life. Every true apostle of Jesus Christ, every true leader in Christ points you to Christ and, and helps you cement yourself in him. And so I pray today that as you have heard this message, you will ponder the things that were said. Because it is a life and death matter. Light unto life, darkness unto death. The question is, what are we being developed? Because we have been, it has been made very clear here today. If you even think, if the, if the light that is in you is utter darkness, how great is that darkness? Are you beginning to understand why some men and women will die for error? Defend a false teacher? Fight to the death for doctrine that is not even of God? Not even willing to listen? Reason together? Find out whether you or I actually believe the truth. Not even open our minds to receive understanding because we have taught this is how it is by our, what, leaders, churches, denominations. This is how it is. No matter what anybody else brings you, it's wrong. No. You ought to be so grounded that anything anybody brings you, you can give an answer for what you believe. Not because a denomination told you, but because you have studied this thing, you are convicted of this thing, and you are grounded and sealed in this thing, and you can stand for yourself. What is your decision today? Will you walk to the pleasing of men or will you learn of God? Will you walk in the darkness of this world and apostate Christianity? Or will you walk in the light of Christ and true worship of God? The question remains with each one of us, my friends. I pray that the Lord has spoken to you today in the way that he needs to and the decisions that you and I have to make. We will make them through the power of the light of Christ, not in the darkened mind of the world. Father in heaven, your words have been spoken. We're all in your care. You do not desire that any one of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance and that all should be saved. You are calling people, dear Father, to evaluate everything about themselves and even where they are in terms of organization. It is time for a true, clear and concise understanding of your truth. It is time, dear Father, you are calling people from the following of blind leaders into following Christ and Christ alone. I pray for someone today who may be in ignorance. It is not hopeless. You are the master teacher and you are calling upon them today to enter into communion with you so that you can open their eyes to the reality of the scripture and Christ in them. I pray for someone today, dear Father, who may be following a blind leader. There may be conviction in error, dear Father, but it means nothing. 
The only conviction any one of us must have is that we are safe in the family of God. We are in the chosen of God, not the chosen of some denomination. I pray, dear Father, that people will wake up to the reality that it makes no sense falling into a ditch for the sake of a man. Help them to be able to walk away and stand on the truth. I pray for someone today who has yet to even care about their mortality, to even care about the end of this world, to even care about eternal life. Awaken them to the reality, dear Father, that they are walking in utter darkness. They may not align, they may not say they have aligned with Satan, but by the rejection of your light, they are walking in darkness. No one can escape that fact and reality. One may not ever want to care to say or acknowledge it, but it is that cut and dry. Outside of your light, they're in darkness. And so I pray today that you will awaken their mind to that reality and they will make the decision right now for Christ. Whatever else, dear Father, needs to be done today, you know better than me, every single person that has watched. So we all remain and abide in you as you abide in us. And I give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my friends, for joining us today. I trust that the message has reached your hearts and you have been blessed. May God bless and keep you for the remainder of the day. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your shares. Thank you for your thumbs up. May God bless you. May God keep you for the remainder of this day. And as this song is sung, may we consider its words as we close today.
by day and night. He is Jesus, the light of the world. Thank you.